celebrities. There's a fact for you. Paired up with an expert. Well, like a girl ones. <laughs> and a classic car. Give it some juice, Myrie, give it some juice. Their mission? To scar Britain for antiques. I'm brilliant at haggling. Who knew? The aim? To make the biggest <gasps> profit at auction. I can't believe that. But it's no easy ride. What's that smell? The clutch! Who will find a hidden gem? That's very Art Deco, isn't it? Take the biggest <laughs> risk. It's half toy, it's half furniture. Will anybody follow expert advice? That's irrelevant. There will be worthy winners <laughs> and valiant losers. No! Put your pedal to the metal. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Uh-oh. Glorious weather we're having. The perfect day for a jolly with a celebrity couple. Very romantic. <laughs> Show me the Essex I've never seen. <laughs> Our loved-up pair in that 70s Reliant scimitar are presenter Rachel Riley and dancer Pasha Kovalev. Never been antique shopping together. We've never been antique shopping. Never beaten ever. me. <laughs> you never beaten me at anything ever. Why would you bring it up? Because this is a competition. <laughs> we're oh, it is now. a competition. Half an hour's time, mate. <sighs> Gloves are off. Sounds like fighting talk. <laughs> For over a decade, Rachel's been a co-host on a top British TV numbers game. She's teamed up with professional dancer Pasha on a much-loved UK dance show. While they didn't win, they did end up getting hitched. Now, that's a result. And Strictly, did you think, oh, you know, eight years' time, we'll be doing antiques road trip together? <laughs> with me pregnant. I, I didn't know. even uh, think about it a year ago. We're grown-ups now, looking for antiques in a vintage car. So, they look the part, but can they tell their Art Nouveau from their elbow? So, antique things, how do you even know that they're that old? You have to rely on the sticker, I think. Oh, OK. <laughs> I think that's the proper technique for it. But Do thankfully, we'll have, a, we'll have an expert with us today. You will, and we've lined up a pair of serious-minded fellows for you. Hold on to your pants. Keep the revs up so the exhaust doesn't fill up. Whoa! <laughs> Just taking their 1962 Austin Healey for a dip are easily excitable David <laughs> Harper and calm and collected Paul Martin. I think Rachel would be quite competitive. I do. I think she's the born winner. And if she's good at sums and good at figures, yeah. then you'll all be on the winning side. She'll be a good negotiator, mark my word. <laughs> Mind you, Pash has got all the moves. He's got the moves, He's all right. He's got the moves, and I think if he moves quickly... Uh -huh. could leave you standing. OK. You might be his new dancing partner. So expect a possible pass a Doberly by the end of this. Both teams will have £400 each for their shopping and the whole of Rachel's home county of Essex to do it in. A bit warmer than Pasha's birthplace of Siberia. <laughs> you grew up in communist Russia, so guessing... Everything were... was antique. Anything they produced 60 years ago still was going around, like uh, baby <laughs> clothes new. or... <laughs> yeah. So you'll be finding, like, Victorian stuff for kids and going, wow, we never had this when I was a boy. <laughs> Rachel and Pasha's Essex expedition will crisscross the county as they shop their way towards Braintree. But it all kicks off in Battlesbridge. And it's a big one to start with. Muggeridge Farm is a bit like an antiques commune with a whole host of individual stores to dive into. All new territory for Pasha, but a trip down memory lane for Rachel. Not been here for a million years, Pash. Well, you've been here before. When I was teeny tiny here, it's changed. So, since you know the place, I'm going to choose where I'm going first. OK. I'm going to go this way. I'm going this way. Good luck. The best man win. Have fun. You too. Right, time to grab your partners. There's bound to be a couple of experts around here somewhere. Hello. Hello, Rachel. How are you? Nice to meet you. Well, nice to meet you too. And you're pregnant? How could you tell? You look fantastic. Thank you. Do you buy antiques? Have you bought antiques? I used to go with my Zeta, my granddad, back in the day. So I actually came here, but not since I was a little girl. Whatever level of expertise you can get as an eight-year-old calling <laughs> your granddad around. That's about my level, <laughs> so we'll get on perfectly fine. I couldn't possibly comment, David. Elsewhere, Pasha's expert is easy to spot. He'll be the one recreating the Spanish Armada. Hey, Pasha! Paul, nice to meet you! And you! I have to confess, I've never been to an antique shop before. Oh, that crikey. is my first time. Really? Am I in trouble? Yes. No, we're not really. Oh, no, no, we're not. OK, what floats your boat? What would you like to look for? Because we want to buy something that you're passionate about. 
probably I would look for some beautiful pictures. Great, I guess, uh, good stuff. Nicely framed, uh, something like yeah. that. Uh, I, I love uh, silverware. Okay. Something beautiful and beautiful. something that we can sell good. Make money on. Because Rachel's very competitive, isn't she? Plus, she's a very good shopper. It's, it's her natural gifts. We got our work cut out. Yeah. We? Back across the way, that natural shopping talent is already being put to good use. The first thing I'm drawn to is this ah, thing. Right. I mean, some people would say it's a monstrosity, but it's fun. Do you know what it is? It is clearly a shots holder. Ah! <laughs> I don't know what kind of house you come from, Rachel, but that is not... A shot holder. No. It's a flower holder and it's called an epern. So 1880 in date. Now, would you have that in your house, Rachel? I mean, I've got a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> so this, I mean, she would think it was great and it would last about three seconds. Yeah. We might pass on that then. Looks like Pasha and Paul are getting stuck in too. This is nice. There's something about easels. People like to display art mm -hmm. on their easels. They like to use easels as well, so there's a double whammy. It's an easel to display a finished picture on, basically, and it's known as a stick easel, and basically it's like one piece of stick, it's one rod. And you do that, and it folds up flat, so it can be stored away. Look, there's a maker's label there. It says Reeves and Sons. It's made in London. William Reeves founded the company in 1790-something, at the very end of the 18th century. Is this how old that no, thing is? No, no, sadly not. I wish it was. This is sort of 1930s. OK. It's almost got that vintage feel to it. It's beautiful. Yeah. I, I really like it. Uh, how much do you think? Well, that's the it's downside. Right. There's no price tag on it. Oh, it's it. priceless. It's priceless. I really like this item if it's priced nicely. We yeah. should get it. This is your choice, but I'm totally endorsing it. Come on, let's go and look for something All right. else. Stay right here. He's taking to this antiques lark rather easily. Mm, please yourselves. Elsewhere, the hunt continues for Rachel. Now, that looks a little more toddler-proof. Just. This is a really funky-looking thing. Do you know what this is, David? You know what, Rachel, you're going to have to help me here. Military 1942 amp tester used by GPO during the war for testing lines. I think that's really cool. Known as a mega, this device was used to check for faults on the telephone system. Looks like it's been repurposed into a lamp. That bulb is a new addition. So it says made in England and it's got the manufacturer's got a number and it's got GPO and then an arrow pointing at the dial. Perfect. It's the arrow, Rachel. That's what we want to see. This is the military mark. So we know it was made for the war effort. I love the brass, I love the wood, I love the light that it's now a useful object again. Right. And, you know, it's quite tactile. Go on, turn that. Let's go back <laughs> to the 40s. Oh, it's so great. You know, that noise. And what's remarkable is that that in its day was cutting-edge technology. Yeah. I mean, you think of it now, you don't think, oh, I'm going to have an object that a phone engineer carries around yeah. with her in there. <laughs> How much is it? Well, it was 195 now it's saying 145 I like it. Let's see if we can get a good deal on it. Should we go in at 100 I'd try at 80 OK, let's try. We can chance it. They can okay. only say no. I think Rachel might be a natural haggler too. Back to her other half. Look at that. I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. I think I'm one of those shoppers that knows the item when it when you see it, so it will jump at me and it will say, yeah, hello, I'm yours. Anything waving at you in here, Pasha? It's like a school bell. Playtime's over, back to work. It's really heavy. It looks like it's wired and should be working then. It's really cool. I wonder what Paul thinks about this. Yes, better show it to teacher. Paul, look. Oh, I like that. You do? Well found. I think he approves. I think it's not that old. <laughs> it looks 1930s to me. Oh, it's 1930s? Yeah, 1940s at the latest. Oh, OK, that's you know much what? older it's... than I thought. That is a cool outside light. Love it. Hmm. What's the price? Well, the price is 45. I'm not sure if it's a good price for this. You know, when you look at modern outside lights, you can't buy much for sort of 60 quid from one of those DIY shops yeah. and they don't look their value, whereas that looks, looks like stylish. Tiny. Yeah, it's very stylish. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like New York theatre land. Ah, you know yes. What I mean? Guys yes. and dolls, that sort of thing. Put them on the wall, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. That's good design. You know, that's what's going to sell it. Let's find out what the very best price is. And for that, you'll need shopkeeper Steve. Hey, Steve. 
Pasha's been busy. Good, good. Find the little light over here. Right, well, I did have four, and that's the last one, so I can do a really good deal on that. I can do that for a tenner. A tenner? Yeah. We'll take it. That's called a no-brainer. There is another thing we've seen, and it's a small folding easel. There was yeah. no price on it. Absolute best price I could do that for would be 70. 70? That's, that's the best. Mm. I don't want to talk about the price in the front of the stadium, but it's, <laughs> I think it's, you'd be really generous with this. Less yeah, than we hoped well. for. You're yeah, well. this is, yeah, look, no, we're going to say yes. Yes, okay. it's definitely yes. Yes. brilliant. Thanks very much. <laughs> Better pay up before you change your mind. They seem very pleased with that £80 pound purchase. We'll get the easel sent for because there's just not enough room in this little thing. Are we going to fit it in? We are really getting small. It. All right. And with £320 still intact, it's time they sashayed off to somewhere else. Our other pair are still on the hunt. There's a whole new shop to check out. Oh, now this is me. I really like this. What, what is it? OK, well, it's a trivet, and I'll tell you about it in a minute, but I want to know why you like it. I like brass things. I love heraldry and I love lions, so my college at uni was Oriel and our logo was three lions. It's got its tongue poking out and it's pretty and it's shiny. So it's a trivet. It would sit next to a fire or a range oh. and it would hold something boiling hot, like oh. a great big hot kettle. So, like, my hair straighteners right now. Exactly. I can put that on there and not burn all the stuff yeah. at home. How much is it? It's 15 quid. Ridiculous. Can't go wrong with this, can we? How old would you say it is? I have no idea. Shall I give you a clue? Give me a clue. Queen Victoria was on the throne. Victorian, then? So it's a proper antique, it's 1800s. Absolutely. Probably 1890s. Wow, like we're having this. Are we going to have it? Like it? It's in the pocket. We're going to have it. As if there was any doubt. Better find someone to pay. Ah! Good afternoon. Hello! Oh. I would like to buy this badger, please. OK, so it's £15, then, please. Right, let me get my money out of here. Uh, a five. Excellent. And a ten. I think that's 15. You think it's 15? Of all people, you should know. To be fair, she's off duty at the moment. One deal done. Let's ask about that £145 lamp from earlier. It's one of Steve's. Hello. Hello, welcome. Thank Hi you. Um, well, we've already been nosing around your shop, actually. Lovely. And I found something that I, I quite like. This beautiful object right here. Yeah, OK. My boss over here <laughs> um, thinks that it won't go for as much on auction as it's listed for at the moment. Blame me. And, Honestly, uh, <laughs> typical. Can we make an offer for it? You can. Can we try you at, at £80? 80 I can go with 80. Oh! Well done. You're better, you're better yeah. than you you're thought. Better than you think you are, yeah. So that brings their total spend to £95. What did I say? Natural haggler. You didn't tell me how heavy this was. <laughs> and it doesn't take a maths whiz to work out that they have £305 left. Thanks a bunch, Battlesbridge. Let's make tracks. Meanwhile, out in the Essex countryside, Pasha and Paul seem to be in perfect stead. Well, that was your first antique shop. You know what? I didn't know what to expect, but uh, it was fun. But you did really, really well. I'm, I'm, I'm ever so impressed. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, yeah you let's go. You did that. You're very decisive. He's quick on his feet, you know. Fame for it, in fact. How did you get into dancing? Simple story. A boy growing up in Siberia. His mom takes him to the dance competition. You see all those beautiful girls on stage. And I said, Mom, take me to the place where those girls practicing. I think it, it was 11 when I won my first competition. This is pretty serious level. Yes, yes. But it was never about winning for me. But having that relationship and connection with the audience, yeah. that was the most rewarding thing for me. Well, these two are footloose and fancy free, having done their shopping for the day, so they're waltzing off to explore the ancient town of Colchester. Down through the ages, this place has seen its fair share of war. It was seized by the Romans, who made it the capital of Britain in AD 43. And then, around 20 years later, Boudicca's army burned the place to the ground. But Pasha and Paul are heading to Colchester's 11th century castle to hear how the town fared in a much later conflict from curator Ben Pates. Hello. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi. Hello. Hello. 
Welcome to Colchester Castle. What I'm going to show you today is a little bit about the siege of Colchester that happened during the Civil War. So do you want to come with me? Please, yeah, let's just go. Colchester was a thriving and prosperous town when the English Civil Wars began in 1642. A long and bloody conflict between the armies of King Charles I and the parliamentary forces over who should govern the country. At the beginning of the Second Civil War, there was some conflict going on in Kent. And then the Royalist forces who had started the conflict made their way up to Colchester. And they decided to stay here for a few days only, just to kind of regroup and regather their forces. Mm. However, what they didn't realise was the parliamentary troops were right behind them. And the next day they arrived in Colchester and laid siege to the town. So how many people were here and what happened next? The town would have been quite populous at the time, but on top of that you had about 5,000 mm -hmm. um, Royalist forces who arrived and about 5,000 parliamentary forces that arrived outside. The siege lasted 11 weeks. That's, That's a very a long, long time. time. Very long time. It started in June in 1648 and it ended in the August. The parliamentary army, commanded by Thomas Fairfax, blockaded the town, preventing supplies from reaching the royalist troops as well as the townsfolk trapped inside. As time went on, the situation became desperate. By August, we know that they were surviving off their pets, cats and dogs, and even the, the candle fat, the tallow and soap that was in the town. They were basically surviving on anything they could. So what sort of weapons were used during the siege? Muskets were very common at this time. So we have behind me an example of one of the muskets. And you can see down on the bottom the shot that they would have used. These are made of lead, mostly. Remember that this is a sieged town. They couldn't get resources from outside. Yeah. So they would be melting down uh, window frames, bits of roofing, whatever they could get. As the battle continued, there were many skirmishes as the Royalists tried to get out for supplies and Fairfax's troops tried to get in to oust them. The parliamentary forces outside had cannons stationed all around the town, as did the Royalists on the inside. Several church towers were used as stations for those cannons. The damage that was caused during this siege was particularly focused towards those taller buildings that had those cannons on. So I'm going to take you outside and I'm going to show you one of the cannons. It's a real it's cannon. A real cannon, yeah. Follow me. And ready to lay siege with their robinette are gun captain James and his able gunner Sheila from the Civil War Reenactment Society, the Sealed Knot. Wow. Hi, James. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Ford. Hello. Hi, wow. I believe you're the lucky person to come and have a try. Oh, yeah, yes, I would love Pat to. Is gonna do. Well, seeing as you've got such bare arms, I really think you ought to put a coat and hat and some gloves on. Pasha, the new model army's latest recruit, is on the parliamentary side for this one. It's definitely you, sir. What size is the cannonball? Inch and three quarter. Okay. Yeah, catch this one. So that will get through like a big oak door. At about 400 yards. With the gun loaded, minus the cannonball, of course, time for Gunner Kovalev to play his part. I would like you to pick up that linstock, blow those ends to make sure they glow. That's it, that's fine. Glowing. That'll do nicely. Have I'm a care, be... give, fire! Wow. Well done. <laughs> Is that good for you, sir? <laughs> I think it worked. Well, it won't pull up. <laughs> The siege eventually came to an end because of events some 250 miles away. At the Battle of Preston, the King's army was defeated, and when news of this arrived in Colchester, the Royalists inside the town surrendered. What happened to Colchester? So Colchester, as a town, was fined yeah. for its involvement in the siege. They were fined £12,000, which was a huge amount of money at the time. £2,000 was given back to the town to help the poor because the town again and its inhabitants were absolutely devastated by the siege. But bizarrely, not long after that, the town seemed to boom again. And by the early 1700s, Colchester was seen as a fairly pleasant town to go to, as a kind of tourist destination. Which goes to show the resilience of the people of this historic town. Now, also en route to Colchester, is our man Harper and his mathematically inclined <laughs> new pal. It's nice around here, though, isn't it? This is your neck of the woods, isn't it? Well, I'm an Essex girl. I'm from yeah. South End, mate, so I'm from the, South the, sea, End. the seaside. Oh, are you? And this is a bit more country, which okay. I, I love. So when did you move out of Essex? Well, I went to uni in Oxford when I was 18 and then came back to Essex for a bit. And in between that time, of course, you got on Countdown. They were advertising for someone who could do the numbers game, and I'd watched it forever since I was a kid. 
right. after school. And I loved it. I love the, the game. I'm a maths geek. I used to play against my little brother. And, and did we, you go for an interview? You must have I had done. an interview in, in a, the TV studios in London and they gave me countdown numbers games to do and they, they pressed this little CD player with the countdown music going and watch me do math. Well, from that high pressure contest to this one, and no one knows more about their rivals than Rachel. And what about Pasha as a competitor? <laughs> I mean, now you're competing well, against I know him. I what he'll be saying about me. He'll be saying she's so competitive, and, but he's a proper gentleman and he's not really competitive in any stretch. OK. So we should use that as an advantage, take Ooh. advantage of his nice. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And go for the kill. Yep, she's competitive. They're just about to pitch up in Aldham, on the outskirts of Britain's oldest recorded town. And their next shop is the Shoulder of Mutton Antiques. Very nice. Well done. Beautifully driven. Thank you very much. This former pub was first built way back in 1380, an ideal venue to house lots of old things. Plenty to throw £305 at in here. I feel like I'm in a Japanese garden. I wonder if I can play the countdown tune. <laughs> no. Not the same without the big clock, is it? Meanwhile, David's been lining up a few potential purchases. Let's have a gander. Right, Rachel, now, I know you love quizzes. Yes, right? I do. So I've got an object here. Can you guess what it is? I mean, I, I don't want to be crude, but it's something with boobies, isn't it? Cos it's got the booby shape with the little screw nipples. Oh, I say. It's a bra stand. That's a thing. A bra I think stand. So. You would have thought she would need some shoulders. Maybe it's a corset if we're thinking oh, that's old a point. school. That's a point. That shows how much I know about bras. Look at the size of it. I'm just going to grab it. Compared to me, I mean, I know I'm pregnant and everything, but how small is this woman? <laughs> well, people come in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> it hasn't got the history that our previous item has got, has it? It's not going to save us from the Nazis, this. No, but it'll give us some fun. You speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pop it down and leave you with it. <laughs> I think that's a no, David. What else have you got? I've found something that you are going to adore. Where is it? There it is. Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love that? It's a horse. Of course. It's not shiny, David. Oh. Look at that. I mean, my one-year-old could win. do better than that. Very good point. The naivety of that horse is its strength and its desirability. Right, it looks really ill. I mean... Ill? Look at that horse. It's a sickly horse. You're oh. not having much success oh. today, David. I think it's over, possibly, over 1,000 years old. 1,000 years old? I think it could be Anglo-Saxon. Really? So that's 400 to 1066, thereabouts. Mm. The horse in Anglo-Saxon society was very important. And that's what they did to them. <laughs> <laughs> they honoured them. <laughs> they honoured them. They oh. honoured them by wearing imagery of the Anglo-Saxon war horse as a brooch. But it's 20 quid, it's for nothing, and I think it's gorgeous. Really? Yes. I'm desperate for you to buy it, because if I'm right, OK. It'll make good money. I mean, can we buy it? I mean, Please. for 20 quid, why not? Please. Right, we, is that a yes? Yeah, that's Right, before it. you change your mind, put it in there. We're right, definitely we're buying. buying it. We're buying but it. But you find something that you like, then. And David can be rude about it in return. What's this thing? What's that? This, this like, clock with a vice on it. It says pigeon. It's a pigeon recorder. You're into ah! pigeons! <laughs> you know what? We had pigeons. So who knew that? <laughs> Rachel Riley, she's a pigeon fancier. What would you...? You'd record your pigeons. You'd stamp a card when your pigeon came in. <laughs> and that's the, the clock. It's like for racing pigeons. Racing pigeon clock. Like an avian version of Countdown. <laughs> £130 is the price on that. I want to be absolutely beastly about it because you've been so beastly about oh. my desired purchases. But I'm now warming to the pigeon yeah. timing. <laughs> pigeon fanciers are a funny breed, mm -hmm. right? And I mean that in the nicest possible way. OK. They love spending money on their hobbies and pastimes. I doubt it would be bought today for its original purpose because yeah. you'll have electronic devices. But as an interesting item for someone in that world, yeah. I think 
Absolutely, yes. So you think the pigeon fanciers will, will flock in? So... You need to write lines for this programme. <laughs> Tim Wanacott's going to steal that. <laughs> oh, you can have it. It's all <laughs> yours, Tim. Thanks, Rachel. That'll come in handy later on. Shall we see what they'll, they'll do on it for Shall us? Shall I go and find a person? Yeah, go and find a person. OK, not a pigeon. You be the good cop, I'll be bad cop. And on the receiving end will be Claire. Hello. Hello. We'd like some of your things. Right. Well, we would definitely like to buy this, please. Lovely. The horse That's, brooch. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's something else that we would like to make an offer for. We were wondering if you would take £80 on the pigeon clock. And the best price is 100 I'm afraid. Rachel, go with your gut feeling oh, here. Go not, for we've it. We've not spent much money so far, have we? And we've bought your brooch for not very much, so yeah. we'll do it for 100 OK, that's right. perfect. I'm a bit nervous about it, because it's on me. It is on you. Uh, but it's beautiful. It's a lovely clock. All in, that's £120 to pay. And they still have £185 in hand. Oh, nice and heavy again. And after a busy day, time for our celebrity couple to partner up and compare notes. I got only two items today. How many did you get? We've got four. Four? I have to really work hard tomorrow to catch up. Yeah. You're in trouble, Kovalev. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's always been good at the numbers game. Nighty night. Next morning, and it seems we're all experts now. Do you think you've learned a lot from yesterday? I know everything I have to know about it. I think tactics for you should be to just sack off your expert and just go against whatever he says. I think that's a really good tip. Are you trying to sabotage my <laughs> shopping? <laughs> Never. <laughs> no, not at all. That was her strategy with David yesterday. We think we've got different taste in stuff, actually, for sure. Even though he likes, you know, bright pink shirts and things, I think we're on a different page. As the day got on, we got to know each other a bit better, and we disagreed a bit more. So that's one side of the story. Boy, did she know what she liked, or more to the point, she knew exactly what she hated, and yeah. she did not give it to me double barrel. Well, despite those slight differences in taste, Rachel and David still picked up a trivet, a lamp made from a World War II telephony tool, a pigeon timer clock, and that contentious brooch. Look at that horse. It's a sickly horse. That leaves them with £185 at their disposal. Meanwhile, Pasha and Paul were in perfect accord, spending only £80 on an easel and an industrial lamp. Oh, I like that. You do? Well found. So, they still have a hefty £320 budget for today's hijinks. Still lots to do, but already our celebrities are looking forward towards the finish line. So what are you going to do if you win? I think I'm going to celebrate in style. I'm going to do a Jody dancing lift with Paul. <laughs> have you informed Paul of this yet? I think Paul can handle it, for sure. <laughs> now, that would be something to behold. Now, before we get back to business, let's park up and do a stock take of their assets. So you ready to see the junk in my trunk? Show me what you got. Uh, booty in my boot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've run out. Just wow. OK. Wow. Pash, you've not bought much. Enough to win. You've bought a lamp. I see you bought some sort of lamp. That's more than a lamp, though. That's a World War II device for checking if the phone cables are working. Look at this. How good is that? I mean... That's going to fly off the shelves. I would give it a fiver, maybe, the most. I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what this one is? Oh, some sort of torture design. So you <laughs> have a clock and then you push someone into that. It's actually for stamping your pigeons in, if you've got homing pigeons. Stamping the pigeons? It's for stamping your cards about your pigeons. Keep track of all your pigeons. No sweat. I'm winning this competition. <laughs> Who says he's not competitive? Right. Time to hit those shops once more. All right, you comfortable? Yes, thank you, darling. All right. OK, Here see ya. Bye. Bye. Pasha's up first, taking a quick jog just up the road to the village of Great Bado. <sighs> yep, he's in there somewhere. No doubt hard at work looking for treasures. Or just messing <laughs> about. E.J. Andrews and Sons is jam-packed with antique goodies. Ideal for finding something for your £320. Not so good for practising dance lifts. But I'm sure there's space for something a little less strenuous. OK, what have you got in mind? 
Very simple. Okay. Feet together, go to the left, a little bit of salsa, and feet together, it's side okay. to side. See, I can't do it, I can't do it. I come can't on, move. come on. Less talking, more moving. Step to the left, and now go around, around, and hips, and hips. Come on, keep going. He's got all the grace of a mahogany sideboard. I know a thing or two about this. <laughs> Good thing we have a couple more days to practice. Yeah, just, I need it. Just practice as we... OK, here we go, as, as, as we search. Here we go, Paul. Of course, you've got to win before you do a victory dance. Better find something to buy first. Hey, Paul. Mm-hmm? I think I found something. What do you Ooh, think that's about nice. This? Coffee pot. Isn't that beautiful? Looks like it's silver. It's a little bit over our budget, but... How much of... <laughs> well, at the moment, Ooh. it's 545 pounds. That's not the price tag, is it? Yeah. Blimey, that is over budget. That is lovely, though, isn't it? Why are you attracted to that? I love the lines. I love the sparkle. You love clean, sparkly, shiny things, and good lines. And I love lines. Uh, silverware and uh, kind of kitchenware. Kitchen yeah. He's got a crown, you see, so that tells us it's made in Sheffield, OK? okay. And this is Sheffield, yeah, look, 1899. There's 24 ounces of silver there. I mean, this is a classic piece of Victoriana, and this would have been on the table, in the parlour, you know, serving up coffee in quite a refined sort of middle-class house. It kind of spoke to me. It just called my name. Uh, oh, did it? <laughs> yes. Pricey items will do that. It's worth a punt, isn't it? I think we go in at um, 2.50 and we said we'll throw in a free dancing lesson or something. We, meaning... We, I mean... I me. Mean, <laughs> yes, I, I, yes, I can organise it and you can give the lesson. All right, well, <laughs> if we get it for 2.50, uh, I'm up for it. With a starting point of £545, that's a big if. Time to tango with Martin the dealer. Hey, Martin. Hello. Question. Yes. We found that... Beautiful coffee. It's a Victorian lady. Victorian, Victorian yeah. Oh, I know. Pot. Yes, yes. You're interested in that, are you? Yes. Yeah. If uh, the price is right. What were you looking at? Well, should I be very cheeky? Uh, I was really thinking we can offer you £200. A little too cheeky, Pasha. I could probably do it for £280. 280 That's uh, a very good price, that, I think. It yeah, is a good price. It, it is a good price. I, I think... Um, 250? 250. Dancing Go lesson on, on top? We can, <laughs> we can do that for you, Pasha. It's definitely. 250? Yep. That's good. We're going to take that. That's a very hefty discount. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's a hefty chunk out of their budget, too. All right. You're coming with me. <laughs> With just £70 left and some rehearsing to do, we'd better shake a leg. Now, Pasha's ears must be burning because elsewhere in Essex, he's the main topic of conversation. He had loads of money left. He only spent 80 quid. I know. Tight. Is he quite tight with his spending? He's definitely not tight with his spending. He's no. not tight? No, he's not. OK, I wonder if Paul Martin is tight then. I think he is, actually. <laughs> of course, they have no idea about their rival's massive splurge just now. So do you think that your taste in the home department is different between the two of you. We find some objects that we both fall in love with. So there's some things that we just agree on, but it does take okay. a little while to get there. So. so you're a proper partnership here? We are. You still want to beat him, though. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're here for, isn't it? <laughs> Plenty of time for that battle later. Rachel and David are taking time out from shopping and are steering the scimitar towards Haybridge. Here to find out about another form of warfare, one that the English excelled at during the Middle Ages. They're meeting Adam Jenkins down by the pond to find out more. Hi, Adam. Hi, Rachel. How are, How are you? Over here? Hey, Adam. Uh, I'm collecting some goose feathers. Fun, or? These actually make fantastic fletchings for traditional arrows for the English longbow. Adam runs Now Strike Archery teaching the history, shooting skills and the once lost craft of making these medieval weapons of war. You can see why they call it a longbow, can't you? Generally speaking, anything from about 70 to 80 inches is about right. These have been around for, since forever, really. They're Stone Age. The oldest one ever to be found, actually, is about 5,000 years old. So it would have started out for hunting, for, for food, obviously. This is it. It's, it's a very simple system. It's just a bent stick with a bit of string attached to it. And it's an easy way to catch your dinner. 
And as the medieval period progresses, it becomes the heavy draw weaponized system, which we recognize as the English longbow. What kind of range would this have for the um, Historically, they were easily shooting at about 300 yards. <gasps> 300 um, yards. And today, I mean, people can do those distances with the right bows and the right arrows. Wow. The longbow in battle came into its own in the late 13th century. During his invasion of Wales, Edward I saw the devastating effect that the enemy's archers had on his troops. After his victory, thousands of these bowmen were employed to be a significant force in his army meaning many of the renowned English longbowmen were most probably Welsh. And it's true the French didn't like them, did they, Adam? No, they weren't a fan, mostly because we changed the way warfare was fought on the battleground. The French were a very noble population, so their armies were amassed purely on nobility. People didn't go to war to die, because if you were wealthy, then you could expect to be captured, and you're going to be uh, kept as a ransom. But the arrows do not discriminate. The arrows don't care how much money you've got. So in the Hundred Year War, it's the first time the French were facing an enemy which actually meant serious business. So vital was the archer to the English army that every common man in England was required by law to own a bow and to practise their skills every Sunday after church. Sunday was the only day off a working person had back then. Um, so you can imagine they, they were probably quite upset by that. But I don't think it would have taken too long for this to turn into more like a sport as we recognise today. And um, I would imagine that as a result of that, they probably practised outside of those hours as well, which hand in hand produces some of the best archers in the world ultimately. What about the, uh, the girls? Is this just something for the boys to play with or would you get your, <laughs> your in medieval woman have a long, long bow? On personal experience, ladies tend to actually shoot better than a lot of the men do. Historically, women had other duties. Yeah. Will this get in the way? I think we could probably work around it. <laughs> the longbow fell out of use in warfare with the introduction of gunpowder, and the skills to make them were all but lost in time. That is, until 1982, when the wreck of the Tudor warship Mary Rose was raised from the seabed. Amongst the items recovered were 137 longbows, some in such good condition that they could actually be strung and tested. For the first time ever, we had original longbows in our hands. Wow. And they could be studied. We could see the tool marks in them. We could see how they were made. So now we're able just to continue that work and keep experimenting and keep making more bows. So it's just one piece of wood for the whole thing? Yes. So if I, we have a look at the wood, you'll see the colour change. So you have the heartwood, which is where the secret to the bow truly lies. That's where all the energy is. And then you have the sapwood, which is this lighter, softer wood down the edge of it, which is more obvious to see on the finished bow. Yeah. It's soft, it's stretchy, as the bow bends, this side stretches, and it keeps the whole system together. Mm. It um, stops it exploding. <laughs> That's always good. Indeed. Now, I think we might enjoy a little archery contest, don't you? You expect us to be able to reach all the way to that target? I mean, that should be fairly easy. Hey, um, fairly easy. How well, far can you get, then? Well, these bows will shoot way down the field. Do you want to see one? Yes, go on. Go on. This is how a medieval archer pulls their bow. All the way of the arrow. Whoa! Time for R2 to knock on and let loose. Ladies first. Here we go. Arm out. Back to the face. Whoa! Oh, not far some, off. There was some power in that. It actually went. It launched. Your turn, Robin Hood. Oh! Whoa! Beat that, baby. All oh, right, I'm going to split your arrow now. <laughs> So good! Come on! So good! <laughs> now the French are worried. Nice shooting, Hawkeye. Meanwhile, our dancing duo in the Healy have their own targets to hit. We've got a bit more to do yet. We're going to be winners. Well, we have not that much money left now. I think we've got our work cut out, judging by what they bought as well. You know, they're buying sensibly. They got some interesting items. Yeah, they have. Uh, keyword interesting, so I'm not sure if it's a competition really or not for us. One thing's for sure, we're going to blow all our money. <laughs> well, your last chance to do it will be in the town of Braintree. 
Final stop is at the Bocking Arts Theatre. Looking sharp, sir? The good folk of the town come here for entertainment and the odd antique or two in the Braintree Antique Centre. Lots of proper old things in here as well as some groovy retro stuff to tempt you to part with that £70 of yours. Better get busy browsing, Pasha, because that bright yellow motor is well on the way. Now, the fun ends <laughs> and the bickering about what to buy begins. We'll start off how we finished yesterday. Yeah, I think so, like you making all the decisions. Well, I mean, isn't that always how it works? I think that's the way this is coming out. <laughs> well, we've got £185 to spend now. I want to get something shiny, please. The sparkly are the better. <laughs> well, with that budget and four items already in the bag, there should be no stopping you. Now, have their less well-off rivals found anything yet? It's tough, isn't it? Yes. In this room, I'm, I'm not sure. I, there are a lot of things, but nothing's talking to me. I've spotted something in here. I don't know if you'll like it, but it's that student lamp on top of that cabinet. It's Ooh. a reading lamp. It's known as a task light. Let's get it down and have a look, then. OK, it's not clean and blingy and shiny, but it would shine up. You stick a candle in it and it has this reflective funnel mm -hmm. that floods down onto your paperwork. You can write by nightlight, basically. It's for students cramming for exams through the night before electricity. £40 on that. It's in budget. It has style to it, yeah. for sure. How old is this thing? I would say that's around about 1870. 1890, end of the Victorian period again. Mm -hmm. But it's got an industrial kind of look. It's not too dainty. Oh, I see how it works. Yeah. I think we hang on to that and find something else and do a deal for two things. Good idea. Get hunting. Let's look what else we can find. They have a plan. Ah, look who's decided to pitch up. 185 smackers burning a hole in their wallet, don't forget, and an eye out for something shiny. Clock, clock, clocky clocks. No more clocks. I'm done with clocks. Down with clocks. Don't tell countdown. Mum's the word. <laughs> this is beautiful, isn't it? Oh, and they've got a creepy woman. Oh, this is... Yeah, Star's house is good. That's a pretty one. It's not shiny, but it's big. I thought it was 4 50 for a second, but the four's crossed out, so is it, is it 50 quid? 50 quid. We've bought it at 50 I quid. I think, you know what, I think this was 7 50 and now 4 oh. 50 Oh, right, OK, yeah, that's more like it. 50 quid, we would have bought that in a nano. I don't know. Yeah, actually, that is... It is 50 quid. That'll be Tom the dealer there. 50 quid? Yeah. It's got to be cheap for a great big doll's house. I don't it's care not how bad, old is it is. Yeah. Well, it is grand, isn't it? I mean, you would want to live in a house like this. It's aspirational. The style uh -huh. is George III, but it's pretty modern-ish. Yeah. But these things new cost a fortune, good, Rachel. Nick. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, I think your lights might work. It's got Stop electrics it. under there. I have to see everything before I make a decision. I'm not going to go into anything willy-nilly. You can't pressure me into a purchase, David. Very wise. That's what Pasha's doing. Actually, what is Pasha doing? Can't help himself, can he? Uh, 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 excuse me. <laughs> Those um, hot moves are a fire hazard. Could you stop dancing in the... I'm sorry, room? officer. I didn't know that was a rule. Love your uh, skirt. Uh, I think it's some sort of lamp. I'm not even sure. How are you getting on? Yeah, almost there. Almost done. What about you? Yeah, I'm browsing. I'm browsing. I've got some options. OK. I don't want to draw your attention to it because it's a really good find. You're going to be really jealous. All I'm saying, all I'm saying. We will see. Enough mind games. Back to the task at hand. Pasha, what have you spotted? I think this is a fun item. I had one of those as a kid. It's an A-framed blackboard, mm -hmm. so two kids can use it, one that side, one this side, and that looks really sort of 1940s, 1950s. Looks like fun. It's great, and it's in original condition. I love the little trays for the coloured chalks. Yeah, I think someone will find a good spot for it as far as look. decoration kind of look goes. Yeah, yeah, there's a big market out there for kids' stuff like that. I see that selling in auction for around about £40. So if we can pick that up for 20 quid... OK, well, we, we there is no well. price on it. It's cute, you know, the toddlers will love that. <laughs> Here's hoping there's some at the auction, then. Well, I like it, so let's go Let's and find see. out, shall we? Do you want to be good guy or bad guy? 
This time I'm gonna be a bad guy. You'll be bad guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm scared. Let's go and say previet to Tom and make him an offer he can't refuse. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing? We found this interesting item upstairs. Yes. Oh, okay. It's a little uh, kid's chalkboard. Yep. No that. price on it. Twenty pounds. Is that your best price? Well, I was hoping it would be. <laughs> I could do 15. 15, 15 OK. 15, and that would, right. be, that would have to be the best on that one. OK, and, and the student lamp caught our eye earlier. I think I've got a 40 on that. How does 30 sound? Passion. Sounds like a best price. 45 in total for the two. Yes, exactly, yeah. Sounds good. I'm, it sounds really good. That's what you want, and that's what you can have. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. <laughs> and nobody had to get roughed up, which is a bonus. That'll be all their shopping done, and with £25 still in hand, too. Paul, a little help, please. <laughs> Dosvedania, Braintree. <laughs> Show off. <laughs> now, are the other two any further forward? Would you mind leading the way? I'm just going to point in the direction, and I know you will stop when you see the thing that I know you're going to love. Turn left, keep on going, look to your left, <laughs> look down. This Yes! Yeah. I do like it. It's, it's nice colours. Yes. Um, and it's an original shape, isn't it? It's Murano. It's got to be. Really? It's got to be. It's certainly Murano-esque. Yes. The classic Italian glassware that was ubiquitous in the 60s. So finally, have I found something that you like instantly? I do really like it. £45 on the ticket. But is it the one? I'm going to say that I really like that. But I've seen hundreds in my time. Yeah. The doll's house is not the best quality in the world, but it's what we might refer to as a mug's eyeful. It's a real lump for <laughs> no money, right? Yeah. And great for the auction. And yeah. people would get carried away with that. But I'm going to leave it up to you. David, David, David. I think we've finally come to an agreement. <laughs> <laughs> Only took two days to get there. I'm comfortable. I don't need to see any more. Come on. Let's get the doll's house. We're sure keeping Tom on his toes today. Hello, guys. Just How are you on? to speak to. Oh, OK. We really like your doll's house. Can I just double check? Was it 450? Originally, it was. I need the space. So it's a bargain if you want to take it. A 50 quid, that kind of discount, I will bite your hand off. Indeed. All their shopping done and still £135 left over. Just need to take it away now. I do all the carrying around <laughs> here, so no doubt I'll yeah. carry it out. Yes, please. <laughs> I'll take the doll. Seems fair. Right, next stop, auction. This has been so much fun. Thank oh. you very much for leading me by the hand. Oh, Rachel, it's been my pleasure. It's been nice to learn about you. Same back at you. And if it all goes wrong in the antiques world, you've always got a backup career as an archer. Uh so now we just have a final step. Now Ooh, yeah. we just need to go to the auction house. And the victory roll and the rumba. <laughs> <laughs> or do the dancing lift. <laughs> Whichever comes first. Before all that, some shut eye. The day of reckoning is upon us. How are the nerves, chaps? I'm less confident now I've seen your coffee pot. <laughs> ah. I'm cursing you. You've made a good purchase there. Well, I've got a pigeon clock. I'm still not sure what is it for exactly. It's for pigeons, Pasha. How do you keep track of your pigeons? Then? Special uh, board and little piece of chalk. <laughs> Number one, in. Flap your wings if you're here. Old school, eh? <laughs> we said adios to Essex, and whilst their prized possessions head north to Lincoln, we head west to the Chilterns and a lovely historic barn just outside of Chalfant St Giles to meet some lovely historic experts. Hello, boys. Hello, Good guys. To see you. Hello. I like, I like what you've done with the place. Yeah, do you like this? Very smart. While they get comfy at the Chiltern Open Air Museum, let's check in at unique auctions where bidders are poised in the room and online too, all under the supervision of gavel master Terry Woodcock. Rachel and David shelled out £265 on five auction lots. Favourite, Terry? What a fantastic doll's house this is. All totally complete. It's not your normal run-of-the-mill doll's house. It is fabulous. He likes. Pasha and Paul's haul of five lots cost a bit more. £375 for those. 
Silver coffee pot, lovely, lovely piece. Silver is always desirable. 24 ounces, colossal weight actually for a coffee pot. With just that in mind, you know that it'll make hundreds of pounds. Encouraging. Now, back at the barn, anticipation is building. And how are you two feeling about this, Rachel? Confident? I am not so confident now I've seen some of Pasha's things. Ah. Shall we give it a go? Let's get to it. Good luck, guys. May the best couple win. Absolutely. Let's start with Rachel's heraldic lion trivet. Start me at 20 pounds, surely. Start me at 20. Go on. Start Come me on. at 10, then. No. We're worried about this. 10, start me at 5, then. No Come one's on. going to buy it. Thank you. Oh, oh yes. We're up to 7. Yes! Come on! <laughs> 8. Eight it's hotting up. <laughs> at eight pounds of your order. Bargain. That's the cheapest oh. lion ever sold. Yeah, not looking so rampant now, is he? I mean, eight quid. That's like a cup of coffee in London. Pasha's bit of industrial chic now, that big enamelled lamp. You can't I mean, it's got a light bulb right? in it. That's got to be worth a few quid. <laughs> <laughs> and we're already up to 20 pounds oh. now. Get in there. 22 now. At 22, 22, I'll take 24 now. Internet it's definitely worth more than that. Come on. Back of the room has it. Sold. Wow, last That's of the very big good. spenders. More than double its money. Good find, Pasha. I think we made some money. I, I actually we wasn't ready to say goodbye to that lamp. Yeah. But uh, for 22 quid, I guess, it's not bad. Lamp number two of the trip. You would expect phone bidders for this, wouldn't you? <laughs> Ten pound is straight in. At ten pound, <laughs> long way to go. At ten, eighteen, we're up to. Come now. on. At eighteen pound, now twenty-six, we're up to. At twenty-six, now twenty-eight. Come on, come on boys. At twenty-six now. You're all out in the room. Oh no! no. Again. It's too At cheap. Pounds of you all finish. No. Disaster. Oh, what? We were robbed. No, perhaps the world just wasn't ready for it. Do you know I'm speechless? Yeah, but look at the smile on his face. He can't wipe the smile off his face. <laughs> Chalk it up to experience. You could use Pasha's blackboard if you like. It's up next. And we're already up to 14 now. Oh! oh. There it is, 16 we're up to okay. now. Well, it should be 20 or 30 pounds worth. At 16 on the old blackboard. That'll 16, do. 18, so give him a quick. Yeah, a bit more. At 18, have you all finished now? I can't believe it. should have made more. But 18, the lady... Yeah, put the hammer on. down. <laughs> give it to the lady. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, OK. Oh. OK. It's another profit for Team Pasha, is what it is. 20% margin, you'd be happy with that, wouldn't you? Thanks to the mass whiz there. Now, time for that horse brooch. Stand back, everyone. <laughs> is this the Saxon brooch? Yes. No. It's hideous. No. It is not hideous. It's but horrible. No. You see, <laughs> Rachel and I's taste differs just a little bit. <laughs> it could gallop away. It, it could, could gallop away. Oh, no, don't be doing puns. Not on this yeah, programme. Or it goes to the knacker's yard. Right, 24, 24, we're up to now. Yes! Oh. Come on! We're winning. We're up to 30 now. Come yes. on. 35 we're up to now. And we're up now to 40 pounds. 45. 45! We're up to 50 pounds. Yeah. 55 we're up to now. Yeah, let's try and get 60. No. 60 now. Yeah. It's yes! Good. Do you have all the money? Go on, David. Wow. 65 straight in. Yes. Great items. 60. Wow! You can't let it go for that. 75. He's not stopping, is he? <laughs> 80 straight in at 80 pounds now. Five I want at 80 pounds. Last chance now. 85 back in. Yes. 85. Uh, everybody's out in the room. 85. Oh, well done, guys. Well, well, well done, done. David. Brilliant. Well done. Brilliant. Just think of how much you'd have made if you'd bought the bra stand. Do you like that little horse now? No. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to miss it. I like the money. Pasha's very solid silver coffee pot is next. The biggest spend of the trip by far. We can go straight in to 80. Yes, come on then, it will save wasting time. Where 120, we? 140, 160, it's 180. It's going. 180, 200, we're up to 220. At 220 now. At 240, I've got there. At 240, 250 standing at the back. At 250, have you all finished now? At 200. Wow. pounds, I can't believe it. It should have made more. But 250 pounds, have you all finished? Oh, I had high hopes so for this item. Yeah. Well, it washed its face, but that is a disappointment. Looking on the bright side, we didn't lose money. No, we didn't. But hopefully they're not going to melt this pot. It's no, beautiful. no, they cannot melt that. That's too good.
We're homing in on Rachel's next item. If this turns a profit, it could be a coup. Coup. It's a niche item. It's quirky. It may be the only one for sale this week, and it may just, <laughs> you know... We've got the mid-20th century uh, pigeon uh, timer clock there. In fact, we've got two or three of these in our next sale. Oh, don't oh! sell them, Mark! Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Why would you Stop say that? 12 I've got there at 14. 16, thank 16. you. 18. At 18 pounds now. You know it's going. Pound. Have you all done? Oh! oh my God. Yeah. Say, we've got Cheers. three of these coming up next, next week. week. <laughs> Terrible! So much for the flock of fanciers David promised. Some purchasers you remember forever. That, that, <laughs> that's one. Lamp number three now. Cattle powered this time. Start me on this one. 20 I've got. At 20 pounds, two I've got there. Now I'm looking for 24. At 22, no. At 22 pounds have you all done? No oh, shame in that. Apart from the eight pound shortfall, of course. That's a loss, okay? That's a first loss. Oh, oh you rub kidding. it in. Rachel and David's final lot, the well appointed Georgian townhouse. All our hope is now on the doll's house. 50 quid? Mm. What a footprint. Start me at £100. Come on, start me at 100 Start me at 50 then. 20 I've got no! there. <laughs> at £20, I've got 25 as well. And 30 at £30. And 5 oh, And no. 40 At 45 now. And 50 I've yes. got there. Yes. Start me at that. £50 pounds now. I want 5 at 55 now. He's back now. 60. Come on. I mean, it's climbing. It's good. Keep going. Now. Keep going. I'm selling it at no, 60. No, you can't sell it. Have you all done? Oh! That's a knockdown price for a prime piece of real estate. A rocky start, and then it climbed up. Well done. Lost up under the hammer, Pasha and Paul's stick easel. I'm quite worried. Maybe they have artists there in the room. I'm you hoping know. so. Ten I've got. Give them a ten up. Pounds. You're playing hard today. At ten pound, I'll take twelve. Twelve I've got there. Oh, no. At fourteen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Come oh, on, guys. Oh, this is disappointing. Twenty. Twenty-two. Twenty-four. It's 26. going in the right direction. Yeah, it is. Twenty-eight. We've got a couple there. Thirty pounds. Thirty-five. Forty pounds. Oh, oh. Going. Ah. Forty-five. Wow. No. 50 pounds. No. Oh, no. 55. 60 pounds. 65. Oh, you're going to get some money. 70 pounds. Keep going. Just 75. a little bit left. Uh, 80 pounds. He's loving this. Oh, look at your face. 85. 85. Uh, 90 pounds. Oh. OK. And I'm selling now. At 90 pounds, have you all done at 90? Oh, well, well done. Oh. Congratulations. Yep, a bit of a nail biter, that last one. Did you enjoy that, Pasha? I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I bet you did. I think it's quite close. It's not. No. Well, you just sit there while I do a Rachel Riley then. <laughs> she and David started this trip with £400, and after calculating auction costs, they made a loss. They end the day on £300.64. But Pasha and Paul, who began with the same amount, lost less. After sale and fees, they danced to victory with £354.64p. Well, have a safe drive, won't you? Oh. Paul, you're forgetting something. Oh, yes, that's right. I hope you're all ready for this. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Come on, Paul. <laughs> Not particularly dirty. I'd barely call it dancing, either. I really enjoy just going where the wind takes us in this car. That was really nice. In the countryside, going to oldie worldy places. I think we should definitely do it again. Not sure we'd get the baby seats in, in this thing. We might have to adapt our vehicle, but I'd go really somewhere again. Keep antiquing. <laughs> <laughs>